I'll just ask two questions and then we can take it from there. So this is, this is from Jonathan Gage. Do you see value in more slash better nationwide standards and rules and accountability in response to current concerns over, for example, excessive use of force against people of color, use of chokeholds generally, et cetera? And this is from Reed Bonadonna, a uh, former Carnegie Council fellow. Uh, would a separate officer corps, like in the military, have benefits in the area of leadership and accountability? Oh yeah, those are really good questions. So, um, so as you probably know, on the accountability issue, as, as you probably know, um, one of the enormous difficulties is that the US does not have a national police force. Um, and this is unlike many other countries where, where policing is, is a matter for the, the national government. Um, here it is primarily local, uh, it is state and local. We have roughly 18,000 different law enforcement agencies in the United States. Um, the majority of those are municipal police departments, um, you know, town police, local county sheriffs, city police. Um, the rest of them are, uh, you know, campus police or various sort of special special duty police uh, like like the U.S. Park Police or the Secret Service Armed Police. We even have a, uh, you know, every every federal agency has its own police. Um, and those 18,000-ish law enforcement organizations, um, they don't report to one another and they don't necessarily talk to one another. And that is something that's very different from the military. We have one military, we have one commander in chief, uh, we have one secretary of defense, which in turn means that the, you know, it's still hard in the military, but there the mechanisms for sort of doing lessons learned exercises or saying, okay, we're now changing the policy, um, are relatively straightforward. You know, the military decides it's going to end don't ask, don't tell. Um, you know, the Secretary of Defense says we're ending don't ask, don't tell, and everybody says essentially, yes, sir, and there may be a little bit of foot dragging, but we have a hierarchical entity, um, and, you know, everybody ends up getting changed and the policy changes. And you can't do that in policing um, because it is so decentralized and the only kind of common floor uh, and it's a really low floor is the Supreme Court's jurisprudence on the Fourth Amendment in, in particular. Um, but the Supreme Court's jurisprudence is extraordinarily permissive to police officers, makes it very, very difficult to hold police accountable because essentially the standard boils down to, you know, if you use lethal force, could a reasonable officer without second guessing them could a reasonable officer have believed in the moment that they faced a lethal threat? And it's, it's extraordinarily difficult to come up with constitutional violations because all an officer has to do is say, well, I, I may have been wrong, but, but for an officer, it wasn't totally unreasonable for me to have thought that I faced a lethal threat and had to use force. Obviously states are free to raise those standards uh, and change those standards. Cities through just internal department regulations are free to alter that floor and raise it. And, and many cities, including DC, have replaced this very permissive framework for the use of force with one that emphasizes the sanctity of human life. Uh, and rather than just whenever you feel threatened, you can use lethal force. And that emphasizes force as an absolute last resort, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, but no, we have tremendous accountability gaps. Uh, the Supreme Court's doctrine of qualified immunity is also an enormous part of the problem. With Congress under the control of both houses of the Democrats for the time being, Congress can't obviously mandate rules for state and local police, but they can create incentives to change those accountability structures. And they, they absolutely should, because right now it's, a, it's pretty much a disaster. Um, oh, and the other question about an officer corps. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I, I have kind of mixed feelings about it. You know, I, I on the one hand, I think that um, it's kind of weird when you think about it, that the only way to become uh, a senior officer in American policing is to start as a, you know, the lowest level of patrol officer and kind of work your way up. That doesn't necessarily make sense and it probably keeps out of policing many people who would be terrific at other levels of the organization and also women and so on because they don't want to kind of slog through rising up through the ranks and being a patrol officer it makes it almost impossible for people to move laterally into policing from other professions um, conceivably some kind of officer corps could change those, those dynamics 
On the other hand, I, I do think there is something to be said for saying, uh, you know, we don't want to have a kind of artificial hierarchy as we have in the military between, you know, commissioned officers on the one hand and enlisted troops on the other with NCOs kind of in between. Um, so I don't know, it's a, it's a great question. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I have an informed opinion on it, but it's a really interesting issue.